Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome again to our virus management practice questions, part two. And my name remains Dr. E.I. Zebasi. I'm your host. Please remember to subscribe, comment, share, give me a like if you like what you're seeing. I need your feedback. Thank you for all your support. Um, this is a five part series, like I've said before, and we've kind of made it short so that um, you can benefit from it. Okay, I hope you enjoy it and learn one thing from it. So question one, what does PPE stand for in the context of bio-risk management? A, pathogen protection equipment, B, protocol for pandemic eradication. C, personal protective equipment. D, pathogen prevention enhancement. I will go with C. <laughs> All right, so well done if you got that. Question number two, how should biological materials that need to be transported from the lab to another location be handled? Remember that you are trying to protect yourself, try to protect the person who is transporting it, as well as protect the biological material itself. So you need to be very careful when transporting it. So usually we transport it in a sealed, sealed in a secondary shatterproof container, B, wear gloves and transport it carefully in your hands. Wow. C, in the pocket of your lab coat, please do not do that. D, cells in cell culture packs and cheese are fine for transport. With A. So question number three, which of the following practices are allowed in the laboratory? Applying cosmetics, what were you doing at home? Handling contact lenses, I hope you are blind. Eating and drinking of the lab. Mm, are you thinking of the sheet and urine? D, none of the above. I will go. Mm. Question number four. Both biosafety and biosecurity me risk measures seek to minimize risk. That is true. So when conducting research on pathogenic agents for peaceful purposes, it is necessary to establish what constitutes a or an dash level of risk. You want to know what is your acceptable level of risk. Note that. So question number five, good work practices include smelling and tasting chemicals. <laughs> you will soon go work. B, not washing your hands before and after lab. C, confining long hair and loose clothing. D, using damaged equipment and classwear. Please, your answer is C. Question number six, which of the following would you expect to find in a biosafety level one lab? I would... Um, I would expect to find A, non-pathogenic Escherichia coli, B, West Nile virus, C, canine hepatitis, B, all of the above. I would expect to find non-pathogenic Escherichia coli. Okay. Question number seven, which of the following is not? Always note when they ask a question, Note whether it is a positive or negative question. So, which of the following is not a primary goal of virus management? A, preventing the spread of infectious diseases. B, minimizing exposure to biological hazards. C, increasing the virulence of pathogens. Wow. D, ensuring the safety of laboratory products. Now, we don't want to increase of any pathogen. Question number eight. What is the primary purpose of a biological risk assessment? Why do you need to do a biological risk assessment? You want to A, increase the risk of exposure to biological hazards. You want to B, identify potential biological hazards and evaluate their risk. C, you want to promote the spread of infectious diseases. D, you want to minimize the use of personal protective equipment. B, what we want to do is to identify biological hazards and evaluate their risk. So question number nine, which biosafety level involves agents that are not known to consistently cause disease in healthy adults? 
A, B, S, L, 1, B, B, S, L, 2, C, B, S, L, 3, D, B, S, L, 4, I will go A. All right? So question number 10, what is the purpose of a biological, biological safety cabinet in laboratory settings? A, to store laboratory equipment. Seriously? B, to provide a controlled environment for experiments. C, to prevent the release of infectious aerosols and protect both the user and the environment. D, to increase the risk of exposure to pathogens. That would be terrorism. So I will go with C. Question number 11. Before I continue, please, and please, and please, have you subscribed? Yes. Have you commented? Yes. Have you liked? Yes. Have you shared? Yes. Okay, let's continue. Which of the following is not a common route of exposure to biological hazards? A, exposed wound or cut. B, ingestion. C, inhalation and absorption. D, irrigation. Irrigation is just out of it. Question number 12. What is the primary objective of biosecurity measures in a laboratory setting? Remember, biosecurity has to do with preventing intentional exposure or unauthorized access to pathogens. So we want to A, increase the spread of infectious diseases, B, to promote unauthorized access to biological materials, C, to prevent the loss, theft, misuse, or intentional release of biological agents. D, to encourage unsafe practices in handling biohazards. Your answer is C. Question number 13. Which of the following is not, negative question, is not a common practice to minimize the risk of exposure to biological hazards. A, proper hand hygiene. B, sharing personal protective equipment. Why would you do that? C, using appropriate containment equipment. D, properly disposing of biohazard waste. I would go with B, don't share. It's called personal, you don't share it. So question number 14, what is the primary purpose of biohazard labels? or signs in a laboratory settings, okay? A, to enhance the aesthetic appeal of the laboratory. B, to warn individuals of potential biological hazards. C, to increase the risk of exposure to pathogens. D, to promote the spread of infectious diseases. Like, I would go with B. Question number 15, safety measures taken during centrifugation are majorly against A, spillage and aerosols, D, needle breaks, C, cuts, D, none of the above, spillage and aerosols. So to actually cap, if you need to cap, cap, or choose um, very carefully and Operate the centrifuge very well to avoid aerosols. Question number 16. Which of the following is not, negative question again, a recommended practice for biohazard waste management? A, segregation of different types of biohazard waste. D, B, 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 incineration of all biohazard waste. Uh, C, Proper labeling and packaging of biohazardous waste containers. D, disposal of biohazardous waste in regular trash bins. Regular trash bins, no way. So that's the answer. Question number 17, which of the following is an example of a biological hazard? Broken glassware? Electrical malfunction, C, exposure to pathogenic virus, D, improper labeling of chemicals. I will go to C. Question number 18, what is the purpose of a spill kit in a laboratory? A, to clean laboratory glassware, B, to handle chemical spills, C, to manage biological spills, 
D to organize laboratory supplies. And B, C, the spill kit is used to manage biological spills. Question number 19. What is a hazard in bio-risk management? A, anything in the environment that has the potential to cause harm. B, the possibility that something bad or unpleasant will happen. C, the likelihood that an adverse event involving a specific hazard or threat will occur. D, the presence of biological in the I will go with A. Question 20 and the last. What is the integration of biosafety and biosecurity to manage risk? Fault. We all know that the answer is bio risk management. <laughs> so thank you very much for an interesting session and for being an interesting viewer. Remember to subscribe, remember to like, remember to comment, remember to share. Love you all. You're my MVP. Till I see you next. Bye bye and God bless you.